Episode 174 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing today on the 30th of April 2023? Bloody hell, it's almost May already. Doesn't time fly? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have to start with a, an apology because this episode was originally meant to be uh, brought to you to be aired prior to the UN cell, English booth cell, which took place on Monday, about a week ago. And I know I had promised previously to, you know, to fire out all three parts of the last Sunday at six show I did. So that it'd be already, you know, you could just have, a, you could watch it through before the, uh, the English booth cell. But anyway, I, you know, life got in the way. I had to go on my, I went on a boys weekend last weekend <laughs> to Portugal, to Porto to be specific. And I never got round to posting this final Russian episode up. However, um, on the bright side, at least I'll be ready for the next, for the 2024 English booth self, hopefully. So that you'll, so you guys will be lucky if you're watching this at some point in the future. Um, but anyway, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, now, together with an apology, I also have a favour to ask. Before we get to the actual um, nitty-gritty of the episode, I have a favour to ask you. Because if you have been following me on uh, LinkedIn under my name, Roland Palleret, you will have noticed that I've been sort of absent from LinkedIn the last couple of weeks. And the truth is I've I run into a spot of bother on LinkedIn. You see, one of the, what I do, you know, is I've run into, I've basically been fallen foul of a three strikes and out policy. Now, what, have my, what, am I, what is my sin on LinkedIn? Well, to, um, to sort of spread the word of the interpretation station, I, I do it via LinkedIn generally. You know, I connect with people. It's the whole idea, to link up with people, okay? And what's happened for the third time in the space of two years is I've been there, on, usually on a Sunday, and I go, connect, connect, I look for you. Most of you people watching here, I've, I've probably connected with you originally on LinkedIn. Okay, that's just the, the way I market myself, all right? I don't ask for any money from you. I don't solicit any favors from you, okay? I just, you know, I just try and expand my network, get as many people to know about the interpretation station as possible, and there you go. But anyway, I was clicking connect with too many people and it tells me that and LinkedIn suddenly tells me that um, they think I'm a bot and that I've had two previous warnings for this this is my third warning and now I'm getting permanently restricted I can't, I can't get into my account so if there's any you know you may have written to me and I'm you're wondering why I'm not writing back to you it's because I can't get into my account I've been locked out I'm trying to appeal it but I don't know I, I, it's impossible to speak to a bloody human being at any one of these social networking companies. Um, the AI, you just get tossed around various um, AI bots in the company. You can't, I can't, I cannot get through to a actual human being to argue my case, to appeal to them. Guys, come on, I'm not a bloody bot. So, um, pending, anyway, We'll see. I mean, it's. I say it's, it's unlikely I'll be let back in. And if that is the case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to have to operate, start operating from my parallel LinkedIn account, which is loaded onto my my wife's phone, my mobile. Um, she's really pleased about that. It's that that and that account is just called the Interpretation Station. So you may already be connected with me on both, both Roland Palera and the Interpretation Station. But if you're not. Please do connect with me now on the interpretation station. That does look like where I'm going to have to run the bulk of my operations from, from from now on. So if you're not already connected to the interpretation station on LinkedIn, do that now, P pretty please. Spread the word. Tell if your if your friends are wondering where's Roland gone, where's he gone? Well, he's still here. He just can't get into his account, unfortunately. And so that's the, uh, I don't ask many favors from you guys. This is just one, if you've enjoyed, if you get benefit from the interpretation station, you want to follow my, keep close track of my stuff, please go and connect with me in inter the interpretation station. Uh, that's where I'll be making my announcements from now on if I'm holding new Sunday at six shows and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it's annoying. It's a pain in the butt. But there you go. So anyway, let's get now to the actual episode itself. So the, the episode is going to be based on a statement that was delivered by Russia at the Conference on Disarmament, the CD, on the 2nd of March 2023, not, not long ago. It's got a lot of uh, important material in it that we cover. A lot of dense vocab, names of treaties, agreements, initiatives, so on. Uh, if you've got Spanish, you know, when I, since we're on the subject of disarmament, if you haven't have Spanish in your combination, I would... 
heartily recommend that you go and watch. I think it's episode 171. My colleague, uh, the chief of the Spanish booth at the UN in Geneva, did, uh, gave a tremendous presentation of all things to do with disarmament and non-proliferation a couple of two or three weeks ago for me. Uh, it is, as I say, it's in Spanish. So you don't have, if you don't know Spanish, it's going to be pretty hard for you to follow. But if you do have Spanish, I really advise you go and watch that. Obviously, if it's Geneva, that's a very that's one of the key. It's one of the flagship issues in Geneva disarmament, right? Uh, and generally, the UN. I mean, it's a huge, a very, a hugely important subject. So anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to play you this text. It's quite long. We got through about maybe half of it in the Sunday at six show. So I'm going to play. You. I'm going to just show you what we did at Sunday at six, and I'll see you back here later on. Okay, here we go. So this is taken from the 2nd of March. Then again, this is again at the conference on uh, disarmament. Did you do this meeting, Malika? Do you remember? I think Malika's gone. You're, Malika, you're, you're muted. Oh, oh yeah, I'm not. Oh, that's it. I, I couldn't hear you. Um, this would have been in my last two weeks, and I did do CP in those two weeks, so no. You didn't know. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see then. Well, because you're the one who's going to be doing the exam, Malika. Uh, you start us off, okay? Uh, distinguished chair, colleagues, I'm pleased to be able to speak. I think the time. CD's got presidents, by the way. Don't they, don't they have both? No, it's presidents. P6, they could say the P6, but it's right, the presidents. Okay, true. Uh, just so you can see, I haven't been on the CD in a while. <laughs> distinguished president, colleagues, I'm pleased to be able to speak at this respected forum. First of all, I'd like to convey greetings from the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov, who had hoped to personally be here to participate in the work of the Conference on Disarmament in Geneva. However, this was impossible due to the unilateral illegitimate restrictions imposed by the European Union. We consider this to be an attempt to avoid an honest dialogue that would have facilitated long-term strengthening of global security and stability, including saving the world from threats related to WMDs. Such actions reflect a fear that the truth behind the rapid deterioration of the international security architecture would be revealed. Okay, that was all sounded pretty good. You said, I know it's the, this respected forum. I was thinking just saying authoritative forum probably be fine as well yeah and i think i yeah because this is the, at the start you're giving the full name russian federation good um you could probably just call them the eu i, I don't have too many qualms about just going straight in with eu do you remember what speed is? Huh? Do you remember what speed is? i i don't i i don't remember what, he was probably going quite fast but i i, I don't I, I i'm usually fine with just going with the, calling them the eu straight away uh an attempt to avoid, yeah, what did you say? Honest dialogue, frank, honest, frank, candid. Those are good um, synonyms that would, have facilit that would facilitate long-term strength of global security and stability. So here, maybe to rid the world, rid the world of, uh, okay, I mean, literally, did, did, did you render Bremen? Uh, Bremen? I speak it. I speak it. I mean, the burden of threats related right. to... Right, so that's, that's what I thought. I thought in English it sounds clunky when you put it like that, yeah. I was thinking maybe you could say rid the world of the grave threat of WMDs. You turn it into a, an adjective might be one way of, of that gets across that notion of it being something heavy of something be, of something being serious yeah or the serious threat of wmds these actions reflect also fear yeah uh revealing revealing the the true reasons the genuine reasons i, I was thinking stremitino. is that what you usually go for rapid yeah. oh yeah I mean, it's you, fast you know it's, it's a short word yeah no i like it i like it that's what i was thinking rapid yeah 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 uh okay uh do a little bit more do, we, we uh, yeah well, you're gonna motor through this and then, well, uh malika however the truth will come out regardless of how anyone may try to hide it the current lamentable condition of the arms control system is the result of purposeful destructive behavior by countries that are part of the well-known 
North Atlantic Alliance, which is obsessed with redistributing the balance in their favor, which means that that is the detriment of security of everyone else. And ensuring they have military strategic supremacy and striving towards global domination. We cannot remain... Okay, stop there, stop there. Let me just do a couple of things here. I mean, there's an English expression, truth will out. Yeah, just truth will out, won't it? Uh, however much you try and hide it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Truth will out. Uh, I think, what was the what adjective did you go with? Go I for said lamentable. Lamentable. So I, I used to have like dire, woeful. Deplorable. De- yeah, deplorable. Um, or the sorry, yeah, the current sorry state as well. Sorry. Uh, the result of <laughs> purposeful. So I have this argument periodically with my daughter. So she says purposeful. I say to her, that's not a word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You say deliberate. Or oh, I did something on purpose. You don't say I did it purposefully. But she continues Absolutely. to claim no that it's all right. Well, according to multiple dictionaries, <laughs> it's a word, Robin. Otherwise, I've been wrong for all my life. That's I'm still going to continue to argue with my daughter about it, but I'll let I'll, I'll let you off. I'll let you off. But anyway, I still prefer intentional, deliberate, the destructive uh, influence of countries. Now, this this is a kind of thing like Like if you don't have the text, that's the kind of thing that you can be forgiven for dropping. If you had the text, you had the time to think about it. You might say something like. Uh, of the con- the deliberate destructive influence of countries that are part of the North Atlantic Alliance, which you might have heard of. I think an English speaker would sort of say it like that with a sort of aside, but it's it's very difficult if you don't have the text. When you make these little sarcastic asides, like in the theatre, like this guy, a Shakespeare soliloquy, and he turns to the audience, that's the sort of style. It's so hard to tr- get those bits in as well in addition to all the sort of substance. So that's maybe, you know, maybe you could just say, which are all part of the well-known North Atlantic Alliance. But yeah, if you haven't got the text and he's going fast, that's the sort of thing you can sort of leave out perhaps, uh, which are obsessed with distributing. So the idea I had was who are hell bent on redistributing, are bent on, hell bent on, uh, redistributing the balance of power in their favor, in other words, to the detriment of others, and ensuring military strategic, I think, superiority. Supreme, I mean, I think just slightly better, superiority is slightly better than supremacy, uh, with, pre- I think you say, with pretensions to global domination. I think we have pretension, you can say, you, you can use pretensions in that uh, context. Uh, and to go to the end of the um, and Larissa, Diana, feel free to ask any questions as we're going along as well. Uh, Malika, just finish the paragraph. Um, certain countries are infringing the core interests of others. Oh, sorry, I missed the start there. Mean, I didn't hear. We cannot mean, remain indifferent mm-hmm. to uh, to how certain countries are infringing core interests of others, waging a hybrid subversive activities against them attempting to pressure them and purposefully creating risks and inciting an escalation uh steering it for their own interests in their own favor yeah uh yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say we, we can't stand idly by we can't stand by as as some countries impinge on and you say infringe you said someone something uh, the core interests of others. Um, I think maybe if you do, I think if you, you don't know what's going to be if you do, I think maybe it's just say conduct, before. conduct yeah. maybe is just the safest, most versatile carry out or conduct against them. A hybrid subversive, yeah, padrivnaya, subversive, that's a good word, right? But subversive activities try and pressure them. I think sila is through force. I think the he wants there's the slightly. That has an added connotation to it, right? The silovoya davlenia, as in through force. Uh, and 
<clears throat> deliberately creating risks. What do you say for Podstyogiva Escalatio? Insight. I said inciting, yeah. So in, inciting, right? I was thinking spurring, spurring an, an escalation. Instigating. Instigating, yeah, that might work actually. Instigating. Um, uh, an escalation which they would then hope to steer uh, to their own advantage is the idea. Uh, okay. Um, to their own benefit, to their own advantage. Okay. Um, Larissa, would you like to have a try a bit? Okay. Okay. Uh, so the first one is uh, the most dangerous um important strategy strategic uh threat uh, is um, is the policy of the united states and nato uh, which uh, uh which are trying to exacerbate deliberately the conflict in ukraine and around it yeah, so maybe yeah, the the the, the most like a threat, the most serious strategic threat. I would probably serious. Austria, mm -hmm. the most serious. I suppose the pressing as well. You can say the most pressing, pressing. strategic mm -hmm. threat. Uh, Nisyot is is posed by, um, as as how I would do. I would say is the most posed. pressing strategic mm -hmm. threat is posed by the um, policy mm -hmm. linear linear policy of the U.S. and NATO towards further. Uh, deliberately escalating, and then this is a bit, you know, this is one of these sort of compact conflict. If you were right behind the speaker, you know, you'd, you'd probably revert to a what the, the, the escalating what what they started, namely the conflict in and around Ukraine. But if you were, I guess, if you were holding back a little bit, you could probably just wait, you know. Uh, the, the escalating the um, the conflict in Ukraine, in and around Ukraine, that they they deliberately initiated. So it's tricky. Yeah, the the mirror. It's in in Tsirovna. It depends how much room, lat, sort of space you're giving to the speaker, how far behind him you are. But yeah, if you if you're right behind him. You can use that what by escalating mm. what was deliberately initiated by them, namely the conflict in and around Ukraine. Uh, go on. Their, their increasing involvement in an armed confrontation is fraught with a direct military uh, clash of nuclear uh, weapon states, which could end up with. Uh, catastrophic uh, consequences yeah i mean you don't need to put sort of put in the which could end and just with with you know it's uh the, this growing involvement in the armed confrontation is fraught with direct military uh -huh, i was gonna i was thinking confrontation but you just used confrontation there as well haven't you yeah military clash between nuclear states with catastrophic consequences uh go on uh we point out um, to the country of the collective West, to those risks. I would say uh, in, in English, it's this strange thing we would point out to them. It doesn't quite sound right in English. I think we would alert them. We would alert the collective West to these risks. I think that's the best in this case of with okay. Ukazi. I know some often Ukazivat is point out. I think I just think here it makes more sense. Makes more sense to say we we would. Um, alert them to those risks. We would flag up those risks to the collective okay. West. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but however, our uh, warnings are uh, distorted, uh, are distorted uh, uh, into propaganda and uh, misrepresented. Uh, I like the misrepresent I would say, I would say however, our warnings are distort are twisted, is perhaps, twisted. Are twisted, twisted for mm -hmm. propaganda purposes and are misrepresented. I was gonna say misinterpreted. Um yeah. 
if you have, if anyone's got a better idea, please do feel free to say that. that that's yeah, that's the idea that I heard. Um, go on. Uh, in all of this is happening at um, the time uh, when uh, we uh, we hear from um, we when we hear from the West um, outrageous uh, statements. Uh, I would. Just will this make life easier for you? Let's just cross ease out. It's at the same time as mm, when West uh, threatened uh, by uh, when the West uh, threatened when the West uh, threatened by forceful retaliation to our state? Okay, so this at the same time as, so whenever you hear like, have ease, my tactic, I mean, it's so generally just, just to turn the first uh, noun that you hear into, make it the subject of the sentence, and then like West is later making, in the sentence. Yes, yeah, so uh, the, when the West, Western capitals are making... Let's say outrageous. Outrageous. Were you here for the fr so this is why I said at the start of the episode, actually. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna say outrageous is a really versatile word. Um, you weren't here, were you, Malik? Uh, yeah, none of you were here for the Spanish, right? Outrageous. It's a really good word because you can make outrageous claims. You can talk about outrageous attacks, outrageous accusations, outrageous events. Whereas there are some words like you can talk about um dastardly heinous these heinous attacks these heinous crimes or these dastardly crimes but to say a dastardly allegation doesn't, doesn't is not as good really it doesn't it sounds a bit awkward the thing is so outrageous it's it's very versatile you can fit it into lots of different contexts so here you could say i'm making outrageous statements uh threatening uh to use uh threatening uh violent reprisals against our state Vital once again, vital uh, violent reprisals, violent. yeah, uh, reprisals, yeah, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. mm, violent reprisals to our state, and uh, all mm, all of these uh, uh, contradicts or clashes. Uh, Runs with, counter to uh, ah run, runs uh, runs a counter to the content uh, uh, content of um, of the joint statement of nuclear weapon states um, about. Mm -hmm. Uh, the nuclear war uh, prevention preventing nuclear war uh, uh, preventing nuclear um, war of uh, January 3rd 2022 um, to which Russia is uh, uh, clearly committed yes yeah, steadfastly committed unswervingly steadfastly. committed um yeah something along those lines so the, all this runs count idiot for us reza you'll usually say runs counter i would be inclined to just uh, skip sadirjanyam and notice that in the russians they like the sadirjanya whatever documenta i mean in english we just say the document you know it runs counter to the joint declaration by the nuclear weapon states we don't I don't know, it doesn't in english i don't feel we'd say it runs counter to the content of the joint declaration so it's an idea again if you're sort of slipping behind that sort of word you could probably skip of the nuclear states on preventing nuclear war 3rd january 2022 that russia is uh, is categorically committed to steadfastly committed to uh dia just give me one second i need to switch the light on in my room it's a bit dark here one second Okay, so Diana, do you, uh, situation da palnitlna. Yeah, I'll try it. I hope my battery will be enough. Okay. So the situation was even more aggravated as a result. Of oh, I think the battery's gone. We've lost her. Okay, Ma well, okay, Malika, I think you 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 just carry on. 
Um, the situation was further exacerbated as a result of the US's attempts to feel out the security levels of Russian strategic sites included in the START Treaty uh, through facilitating the Kyiv regime's conducting of armed attacks. Okay, yeah, so, so, so exacerbated, compounded, aggravated here, you can see the situation was further aggravated as a result of attempts by the US to feel out or to probe, Ooh, uh, to good. probe the shishness, the, um, the probe, uh, the idea I had here was the, the defenses. What did you say for the shishness? Uh, I think security levels. Right, right. I was thinking like to probe the defenses of Russian strategic facilities, Russian strategic sites. Uh, I think these are the ones that are declared mm. in the START treaty, uh, basically by helping the Kiev regime conduct armed attacks against them. Uh, I mean, usually I will say for yes, is facilitate. That's my mm -hmm. go-to, but it seems a bit clunky to by facilitate. But again, you know, yeah, if you don't have the text, it's hard to say, but this is more a sort of case of helping them conduct attacks, facilitating them in, con as well as facilitate the Kiev regime in conducting attacks. You just have to sort of uh, adapt as you go along. Uh, go on. Against this backdrop, we consider Washington's demands to, uh, demands based on the START treaty to be provided access for inspections to nuclear sites in Russia to be the height of cynicism. You're going to remember that. You're going to leave that right till yeah, the end. Yeah, that I might, because that was colorful. Yeah, you think you could see, I, I mean, I would, again, my inclination would be just to get it out of the way straight away. In that light, we you see, the height we of see I mean, as yeah, the height of citizenship. Really yeah. We see as the height of citizen, the demand, Washington's demand mm -hmm. with reference to the provisions of START to provide to them uh, inspection access to Russian nuclear sites or facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and go on. Especially in the current situation where despite the or contravening the fundamental principles and policies enshrined in the preamble to the START Treaty, the USA, together with other Western states, including nuclear powers, Great Britain and France, have taken, have set a course to towards the strategic defeat of Russia in the all-out hybrid war they're waging against us. In this context, this, uh, we... Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, go on. Uh. In this context, we were forced to make a declaration about the suspension of START. At the same time, as we've already said, we continue to adhere to the quantitative restrictions on strategic offensive arms. Okay. Um, particularly coming okay, in sight the fundamental principles. The object politics I notice you, you you skipped. I skipped yeah. because I mean they're just they're just policies. I yeah. don't know. What, what do you think? Uh, my my feeling is they'd want you to they'd want to hear something. Often when I hear that obsha whatever, mm. sometimes I say that the universal political understandings. Often I I, I think that when you hear with obsha they want to hear uni something universal. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I, I get it. If you're fast, I mean, you could get away with, uh, you know, or I don't know, maybe it's just general political understandings, despite fundamental principles and general political understandings, universal political understandings, uh, enshrined in the start preamble, the, the US together with other Western states, including the nuclear states, the UK, France. Yeah, I mean, just really has sought, is seeking to inflict, has sought to inflict on Russia a strategic... What did you say for Nanesienye? Strategic... Um, I said... What did I say? It sounded like something beginning with W. Is, it's just like what happens at work. I immediately forget what I've said. Um, have, I said, I've, I've set a course for, I think, just towards the strategic defeat uh, of towards, Russia. I think, okay, I, towards, I think I didn't that, use... Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's for me. I always yeah, inflict, I think, is a very important verb generally with these things good. inflict a strategic defeat on russia in its uh in the razviazne in what they've unleashed against us namely the total hybrid war mm -hmm. again you have that option or you have the option of waiting in the hybrid war in the total the, in their total hybrid war against us mm -hmm. um and those conditions we've been forced to announce the suspension of start 
uh, as we said, we will continue to 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 to, to comply with to observe the quantitative uh, restrictions contained in start. It's tricky because SNV is now referring to strategic offensive. He's referring to the weapons, and mm -hmm. we we don't have a, an acronym. Yeah, for you those. can't say SOAs. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you, no one would know what you're talking about. I don't think. As a strategic, and that's why I my inclination would be just to, to tweak it slightly and just say, and just say the, the quantitative restrictions weapons take so long. Exactly in the start in the in the treaty in the in start. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be if you just said the, I think they heard the start start again. They'd yeah. probably be like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. But it seems yeah, strate strategic offensive weapon. That's eight fucking it's syllables. Too much. Too much. Too much. Um. Just do the next, uh, do the next paragraph as well. Could you? Sorry, so there is. I'm going to give Malika a bit more time because she's got the actual exam and she, she does it very, and you know, sure, she does, does it really sure. well. And just to give her the practice. So go on. But the destructive, destructive actions of the USA and their allies are not just inciting an acute crisis in the Euro Atlantic region. They're also creating a threat of serious upheaval in the Asia Pacific region. Other regions are also suffering. We could say that the global fight for a new world order is gaining momentum. Certain consider this to be an instrument to fulfill their self-serving interests and ensure they have a dominant position reigning over others. But there are also those, and they are in the majority, who are striving towards a just, equal, and polycentric system of international relations. This is accompanied by an increase in tensions and acute crises. Okay, let's see. Uh, what would I? Yeah, but Stjorgi, again, I think Spur is perhaps mm. this. It spurred a crisis a, to precipitate. He's talking about precipitating a crisis as well. Nice. Uh, near Atlantic, they pose a threat. Uh, uh, Patricienia, that's a yeah. I love. I always go with upheavals for Patricienia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. ATP is the as uh, the uh, What is it? I mean, it's Asia Pacific region. Region, yeah, yeah, yeah. Liha Raditi region. I mean, you could say other regions are also feverish. Um, but it's just. I mean, it sounds a bit funny. In in English. Maybe in term other other regions too, in or in turmoil, maybe. Uh, what we can speak of, what did you see from that Birash Obrati? Gaining momentum. Okay, I think I was thinking, in effect, we could, we could speak of an accelerating global struggle for the new world order. Because I think, you, did you have to put gaining momentum at the end or something? I had to put it at the end, yeah. Yeah, so maybe accelerating could work here. Uh, some see this as an instrument uh, in the service of, whenever I hear Uska Korisnik in Tidiesov, I think about ulterior motives and hidden agendas as soon as mm -hmm. that those are the two things that immediately spring to mind i mean what you said i think for self what you talk about self-serving self interest and to ensure their leading dominant role over others and then here a couple of things occurred so, because again so, with something like this I don't know, mm -hmm. right again your initial reaction is to try and process the words but sometimes you can get lost and it gets a bit clunky. But since we've already said, so we couldn't just say, I mean, we could have said, I suppose, ensuring dominance, but we already said dominant position or role, which means that by the time we get to Pelagenia, we're sort of ahead. We can, you know, skip that and go on because we've already yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, No, but so th there was just a couple of things that occurred to me as I was preparing that uh, in, the, the, in the event that, okay, that he's speaking and, and something, and, he, you know, that's the point he's making. He's talking about them being dominant. Uh, but sometimes to have the idea of they want to be basically top dog. Mm. Okay. They want to rule the roost. These are a couple of little quick things that might get you out of uh, out of trouble if you're like far behind. And because those those things are quick to say, they want to be top dog, mm -hmm. carry on, rather than they are seeking to acquire the the leading role, subordinating <laughs> others, which if you try and do that, you're just going to go. Blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you say uh, they're seeking to become top dog or they're seeking to rule the roost, it's quick. So I, it occurred to me that just because it's again, these are it's an I, ideas that they, they they come they talk about frequently, and it might help you out of a tight spot, perhaps. Um, and then okay, I think this was good. That are seeking genuinely 
uh, fair, equitable public centric system of international relations. Uh, this will be accompanied by a rising tensions and acute cri and acute crises, if you want, like phenomena. I guess you could do it to say crises. Um, okay, Larissa, do you want to do a little bit? На этом фоне становится все труднее. We haven't sure. got much time left, mm -hmm. got five minutes uh, left. Against this background... Uh, By the way, it's against uh, на этом фоне. I always find it's easier just to say in that light rather than against that backdrop. Yeah, in you that know? light. Mm -hmm. uh, in that um, light, it uh, became increasingly difficult to uh, address... Uh, uh, to address uh, arm control... Uh, issues of arms control, yeah. As well, issue of all, uh, arms control, uh, as well as uh, strategic strategic risk reduction. Okay, or reducing uh, strategic risks, right? Reducing strategic risks. Uh, these uh, issues are uh, directly related to the objective need for a major major update oh, that's of, nice. the, yeah. of the security architecture and uh, making it more um, stress resilient, more resilient. We would yes. So we would say I would either just say resilient or stress resistant. Stress they do, so they do at the UN they like they do like that word resilient. So I think you could just say making it more resilient, but Stress resistant, yeah. Here's a, a very basic thing, right? But uh, Malika, what is your for when you hear Zadacha? What do you say for Zadacha? Um, hang on, I was trying to figure out the, the microphone situation. It's good now, it's good. Um, task is what Ta first comes to mind, right? Anything else? Do you have a change? Do you ever say something? I mean, because sometimes, you know, you have to say Zadache, and so I'd say tasks and goals there, objectives. But so sometimes I sometimes I use challenges. I, mm. I, I, I sometimes use challenges for, for Zadache. It's some, sometimes task doesn't, it's mm. almost like we wouldn't say it in, 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 in that, and uh, sometimes I think that challenges is, is better. I think I learned that in my 2008 internship. So anyway, just an idea for you guys watching, maybe for Zadache, rather than always saying tasks, challenge. Uh, go on, Larissa. Criticizing mm. um, the as a critical um, component of such work, we see a need for for faith based dialogue. On, I know faith. I, okay, good uh, try. I know what you're getting at. Good faith. Good faith. Good dialogue. faith. Good faith. Uh, dialogue um, regarding um, param parameters for uh, for coexistence that based on the principle of equal and indivisible security um, um, which would make the security architecture more resilient uh no so be speech really be speaking a minimum with a couple of conflict of patterns i would probably hear which which would help speaking just minimize speaking a minimum which would help minimize all the conflict potential the potential. amass the accumulated conflict potential but i think conflict nakoplinova is maybe you could leave that out that would help minimize conflict potential uh uh huh uh, only in this uh, case, arm control, uh, arm, arm control, which cannot exist uh, separately from from geopolitical and uh, military strategic uh, reality. Um, uh, will be truly will be truly effective and uh, viable. No, it's good. Yeah, only in that case will arms control, which cannot uh, exist uh, 
divorced from geopolitical military divorced. strategic duality, isolated and sep separated from and isolation from will become truly viable. Isn't this supposed to be viable? As that's, that is the, definitely the word and effective. And just to conclude, come on, Malika, just rattle off this list paragraph here very quickly. Uh, we consider the UN disarmament mechanism to play a determining role in strengthening international security architecture and finding ways to uh, save the arms control, disarmament, and non-proliferation system from this crisis on the agenda of the conference. Now, the, the one thing I'd say, just one thing. So you're not going to this Viva. You never like with Viva. I always find that word. Yeah, you never quite know, I know which way. It's, I would just go bring. I would just because that will be, you know, just live bring and then you'll add the out or in to bring this whatever. out of the crisis yeah, yeah to no, bring fair. the system of arms control the arm out of the crisis so i would just play safe when you hear vivid mm -hmm. um just say bring and then yeah, because it might be with voice <laughs> right exactly um in, on the agenda of the conference, we uh, emphasize the issue of developing a multilateral legally binding instrument to prevent an arms race in outer space. The need for such an agreement has significantly increased after the implementation of the U by the US and its allies of military space programs for military operations and ensuring military supremacy in outer space is the only way that um, to avoid the weaponization of outer space and therefore military conflicts in the terrestrial orbit. Okay, um, right. That's all very good. Let me just see. Yeah, the, there's a lot of this sort of uh, paros. Okay, you need to know what paros are. Preventing an arms yeah. race in outer space. Uh, there's a com UN committee on that. That's what all this is about. Yeah, legally binding instrument. You can sometimes call that an LBI. That's uh, that's an acronym you can sometimes mm -hmm. use uh, to prevent a uh, arms race in space. The need for such an what do you say for the governorialnosti? Uh, here I said agreement, but I know you like uh, say arrangement. I like arrangement for the governorialnosti. Yeah, <laughs> I like uh, <laughs> I like yeah, dagavor. I like treaty. Saglashenia agreement. The governorialnosti arrangement. Uh, give, uh, significantly growing in view of the US and their allies military space programs conduct military operations in um, Dastigen, uh, to achieve military supremacy superiority in outer space that's the only way that will help us avoid the weaponization of outer space and armed conflict in I think in, in, in orbit in outer space orbit terrestrial is that terrestrial Extra, extraterrestrial orbit, maybe. After. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess outer space would be the extraterrestrial orbit, and then, right? I, I uh, we'll look that up. Okay, for the for people watching on the YouTube, I'm going to look that up, and I'll stick it all on 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 the screen. Um, question: Outer space orbit? Maybe you just say if you're not certain, just in, in orbit anyway. Uh, okay, guys, I'm going to have to draw things to a close there. Um, okay, so uh, we're back to me again in uh, real time, as it were, then to finish this text off. Now, before we carry on from where we left off, in the uh, intervening, when was when did we do that Sunday at six? It was two weeks ago now that we did it. And so I had a couple of ideas and a couple of things that we, we raised there in that first half hour that it's maybe just worth going back on. Uh, here, okay, I'm sharing, if you can see the screen. Now, they talk here about this sentence starting here. So, bien, blah, 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 down to Vainier. And this expression, I think uh, the USA and the, the West, basically. Взяли курс на нанесение России стратегического поражения. And I th what did we say in the actual, in the Sunday at 6? I think we said, I think I said, are seeking... Uh, are seeking to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia. Sometimes I sort of adopted a policy of inflicting a defeat, strategic defeat on Russia. It occurs to me, it often means they are just intent on, they're determined on, uh, intent on is perhaps the best. Uh, that would, so it would read, particularly in current conditions, when uh, despite fundamental principles and universal political understandings as enshrined in the uh, preamble of START, the US, together with its with the other Western countries, including the nuclear states, the UK and France, are intent on 
uh, dealing Russia a strategic defeat. Well, that's a good word for nanasien. I always say inflicting, but that's a to deal a to deal a defeat. Ah, just there you go. Bing. But yeah, so Vyatkut, I, I think that works quite well. Our intent on. I mean, we have the old, my old favourite, our hell bent on, our bent on inflicting on dealing. So anyway, yeah, dealing a defeat, yeah, and defeat, dealing defeat. Yeah, we can deal blows, deal def deal defeats, whatevs. Uh, and then what was the other thing? Ah, oh, so right at the end, then we were talking about. Ha, okala zimni arbit. So I wasn't too certain about this. I looked up in Multitran, and the best thing I found in Multitran, to my mind, near Earth orbit. That sounds pretty good to me, actually. Armed conflict in near Earth orbit. I would say that's the best, perhaps, solution. Okay. So there we go. So let's carry on then from where we left off. Okay, Asnova Imirza. So maybe we say there is a foundation in place. We do have a foundation. The draft treaty on preventing the placement of weapons in outer space. Okay, this is an important treaty to know from the Russians' perspective because it's a treaty they reference frequently because it's a joint Russian Chinese initiative called, I think it's the PPWT. Uh, the treaty on the. Uh, yeah, so this is called the Treaty on the Prevention of the Placement of Weapons in Outer Space. I think they know it's known as the PPWT. And it is a, yeah, a Russian Ch Chinese initiative. I know the West aren't too keen on it. They're often quite disparaging about that treaty. But as I say, it's a major initiative from the Russians and it's one they'll often reference in the context of all things to do with nuclear disarmament, uh, nuclear non-proliferation, etc. Uh, okay, preventing, arm, uh, preventing the placement of weapons in outer space, the use or the threat of the use of force against outer kosmiczkich objektów, outer space objects, I would say here, uh, submitted by Russia and China for the consideration of the conference. Okay, Pridania Impulsa, got a couple of good solutions for that. I often like to galvanize, to reinvigorate. So in order to reinvigorate, uh, relevant international negotiations. We initiated together with okay, maybe you could say like-minded states as an idea, or you could maybe just say partners. We, we've initiated with our because if you they're calling them their partners, it, I guess there's the the uh, it sort of presupposes or at least it uh, hints that they have the that, that, that they sort of think alike. So I think you could probably here say either initiated together with our partners, the creation of a specialized group of governmental experts, uh, which would begin its work in the second half of this year. Also, when you have groups of governmental experts in English, they're often referred to as a GGE. So that's a very, yeah, that can be a very handy shortcut. So remember, Pridani Impulse, reinvigorate, galvanize, revitalize. Want to review? Yeah, yeah, that could work here. Revitalize relevant international negotiations. But I do galvanize a lot. I like galvanizing. Lately, for Sydney Vrime, there have been active attempts not only to abyssieni, so you could say devalue to I said it before a couple of minutes ago to disparage. I said the Americans often disparage that the PPWT. There have been active attempts to not only disparage or um denigrate previous achievements and narabotki that's always one of these weird little russian words that can from i think innovations is quite a good possible solution for narabotki so to devalue previous achievements and innovations in this sphere you see it rolls off the tongue easily enough but to also formulate some kind of some kind of new rules uh regulating regulating on the conditions of the US and their allies uh, possible military confrontation in space of course in space in outer space I think we just say space or maybe on on the ter I guess in English it's pretty better to say regulating on the terms of the US and their allies a possible military confrontation uh, in space 
Предлагая, предлагаем западным странами малофекни мери. I think you could probably leave out the предлагаем here. It really just acts as a as a, the definite article here. You know, the Western countries. We see the the, the Western countries uh, in, ineffective measures uh, in the context of the concept of the so-called uh, responsible conduct in space are unable to address the main challenge. Remember, I was telling Malika during the Sunday at 6, I think about Zadacha, uh, you know, task is probably your go-to, but again, I think here, challenge would perhaps work quite well, just as you're not always saying task for Zadacha, to meet the main challenge, to achieve the main goal, the main objective. Objective is another good word for Zadacha, right? Yes, and then just back here, you could, the proposal by the Western countries of uh, ineffective measures. Yeah, but like I mean, when they're using these sort of compound adjectives can often, I think, just be, be dropped. Uh, so the Western countries, ineffective measures uh, in the context of the concept of so-called responsible conduct in space cannot meet the main objective, which is to keep out of space uh, a zone of uh, universal security uh, free from uh, armed confrontation. On the contrary, they are zadumani, they are sort of concocted, or they are conceived. So I was just trying to think of a good what solution here for Z uh, Z Zaviesa. Is that, is that with a... The uh, the stress goes Zaviesa. There's a word in Serb. If you speak Serbian, Zavisa. That's the word for curtains. So uh, <laughs> that that my sort of knowledge of Serbian, whatever, often helps me with Russia with certain Russian words that may seem unfamiliar. But I think maybe you see a smoke screen. I'm looking here at some other potential solutions. So maybe uh, and on the contrary, they are they they are conceived as a smoke screen for the accelerated creation of military outer space potential. I think the best solution here is capabilities. Often it's capacities when you talk about but like when they talk about military cap weapons, often capabilities is the best word. So for military outer space capabilities and their application, utilization. Russia неизменно выступает за. Russia is firmly in favor of. Russia steadfastly supports. Russia is firmly committed to, you could probably say the Vistupad Za, you could probably say committed, Russia is firmly committed to bolstering the nuclear non-proliferation regime based on DNA, very important acronym, Have we, I think we've had it before, the NPT, anyway, the Non-Proliferation Treaty. In August 2022, uh, there was, let's just say there was, the 10th NPT Review Conference, okay, the RevCon. Did I mention this in this episode? I say for review conference, I often call them revcons, preparatory committees, prep comms, rev review conferences, revcons. They're very useful shortcuts to have in English. Uh, it ended without the adoption of an outcome document. document. We'll usually say an outcome document. Dramatizirovit situatio. Okay, however, to dramatize the situation, literally, again, you could say that. To make a mountain out of a molehill, I guess, if you had the time to say it, is basically what, what they're getting at, right? To get hysterical about the situation, we might say most likely in English. Mnajit pesimisticzki vyvody. Again, to actually say it literally, to, to multiply pessimistic conclusions. I think in English, again, that sounds, that sounds really odd in English. Uh, maybe you would say uh, getting overly being overly pessimistic to rasuzdato nekoim krizisye to suggest some kind of NPT crisis would be illegitimate, would be unreasonable. Maybe we would what would we say in English? Would be going too far? Maybe we, and, and sort of in, in a natural English we might say that it would be you know would be it would, go, it would be going too far to get hysterical about the situation, to be overly pessimistic, to suggest some kind of crisis in the NPT. But again, it's hard to do that because obviously 
comes right at the end of the sentence, so you just have to sort of go with the flow a bit. Regardless of the presence or absence of a uh, final report, the report, uh, sorry, the treaty continues to stay in force, continues to be valdisert, continues to be in effect. It remains one of the Kragolnikami, that's a very important word, one of the cornerstones of the global international security architecture and the non-proliferation regime. The conference clearly showed that states' parties are committed to uh, preserving the NPT and to and continue to firmly abide by uh, it, its principles. And there's a law of principle. I think you can just say to firmly abide by it, the, its principles or the principles contained therein, if you want to add that at the end. Okay, so bolshu trivog vizavit. Okay, of 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 growing concern is that's the best way to do a construction like that in English. Going into English, of growing concern is the situation concerning the VZI, the CTBT, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. What is it? Dagavor. Ah, yes, dagavor of the obiemiushim zaprishenie ispitanie yadernova rujia. No. That's the one. Yadernik ispitani. CTBT, very important uh, um, treaty to be familiar with. So responsibility, responsibility for the treaty. Uh, okay, 25 years. Okay, it's in Russian. It's literally uh, for more the, 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 the treaty, uh, which has been in existence uh for over 25 years so if you've started saying you know you, you can either say which has been in existence for 25 years or you could also say which was adopted 25 years ago if you've started going along the lines of saying which was adopted you're so you know maybe in english we're more likely to say which was adopted we talk about when it was adopted rather than talk about how long it's been in existence for i mean i mean it comes down to the same thing, right? Uh, which was adopted more than 25 years ago, has still not entered force, uh, lies effectively with the US, uh, which has demonstratively uh, refused to ratify it and, is, uh, and appears intent on resuming tests, okay? As Atkazat, I often moan about Atkazat, right? Because it's always different, depending on the context, it's always a slightly different word. So here it's really refuse. The US, which has dis demonstratively refused to ratify it. And again, this Nastroy, Prayavyat Achividni Nastroy, and again, seems intent on, like, like we said for Vzial Kursna earlier, it was the same idea, seems intent on renewing tests restarting tests uh, we cannot stand idly by i mean you must have i think you could just see we, we 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 cannot stand idly by or we cannot ignore this something like that uh, now if the us does indeed take that step and is the first to conduct nuclear tests uh, we will be forced to adequate we can say we'll be forced to respond in kind or will be forced to uh, respond appropriately if you really want to just play safe uh, no one should have any dangerous illusions that global strategic parity uh, could be destroyed overturned can be overturned can be destroyed so whenever I hear something like that, I, I, I will tend to say we welcome the fact, we welcome, we commend. But anyway, we welcome the outcomes. Yeah, here it's a, we welcome the outcomes of the three sessions of the conference on creating uh, in the Middle East a weapons of mass destruction free zone. Obviously, the um, what's perhaps better known are the nuclear weapons-free zones uh, and NWFZs, 
Uh, but the big thing is they're, they're trying to they want to, that some point they'd like to create in the Middle East a weapons of mass destruction free zone. So that's a very important very important initiative, uh, which will see. so the Russian acronym Zusomu. I, I don't know if the I think I've, they don't use the acronyms much. In fact, the full name of it, as we can see here, is creating in the Middle East a uh, weapons. Uh, it's actually a zone. Uh, free of nuclear and other forms of weapons and destructions and their means of delivery is the full name. Okay, Stavki, means of delivery. Um, but I think you could probably just say here weapons of mass. The, the general term in English is just called a weapons of mass destruction free zone in the Middle East. And you remember, you need to know your nucle other nuclear weapons of your nuclear weapons free zones around the world. What is it? Pla that are based on the various treaties, Treaty of Tlatelolco, Raratonga, Pelindaba, Semipalatinsk. Jeez, I just reeled all of them off like that. I think it's good just to be familiar with them, okay, because they often get mentioned in the context of nuclear weapons. It's important for states in the Middle East region to assume matters in their own hands, to take matters in their own hands. Uh, we look forward to the swift accession to this process uh, of Israel and the US the co-sponsor of the resolution on weapons of mass destruction free zone of 1995. Uh, we are ready to do our best to um, facilitate negotiations as observers. Uh, we highlight the need for a, a immediate action to strengthen okay, the BTWC, the Biological Toxin Weapons Convention. Or you can call it either the BTWC or the BWC. Why did I get the feeling? I've done a, I think I've done a statement. I did a Russian speaking episode on this uh, very recently. I think there was a one, one episode where I went through these questions that the US wanting to put to the US in the context of what's going on in the Ukraine, the, the biological labs. That's a very good episode, a lot of useful vocabulary. I think I sort of dig deeper on the issue in there. But because, yeah, B, that BTWC, that, they met pretty recently in here in Geneva. Obviously, there was quite, it was quite a fraught debate. Um, but, yeah, so that's the Biological Weapons Convention. Above all, through resuming work on a legally binding pro protocol and with an effective verification mechanism, mechanism проверки, a verification mechanism. Nastroeni uh, na konstruktivnu robotu. We are committed to constructive work as part of the new uh, review cycle and mechanisms of the convention, uh, in the uh, including within the uh, specialized working group. Again, this says the Vayme sort of acts as a bit of an, a definite article. I mean, you could say in the special, in the specialized working group that was created, if you wanted to. I, I don't think if you're going at speed, I think that's the sort of thing you could probably drop. I think um, did I? I can't remember if I did this statement actually uh, live. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't know. I suspect, you know, if, I, if I'd got it, if I had the text, I'd have probably said in the special working group that was created. If I didn't have the text, I'd have probably skipped the Sosdavayami. Uh, I always tend to go with Vastrebna as the relevance, okay? Not the, 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 they're in demand. I know that literally means that they're in demand, but I, so I always tend to render Vastrebna as the relevance of these steps. Um, are in particular uh, confirmed uh, by the discovery during the okay the SVO or the special military operation uh, of evidence facti that's a bit of a false friend try and try not to say facts okay it tends to be evidence of military biological activities in Ukrainian territory conducted in violation of the BWC with the support of the Pentagon and affiliated structures, including private companies. So yeah, this, go and watch that other episode. Again, I'll link to it somewhere in the 160s, I think, that one, where the, it's the questions. There's all these questions that the Russians want to put, uh, put a whole document of questions asking the Americans about what military private 
companies were doing that sort of mixed up in whatever's going on, whatever was going on in those labs. That's I think that's quite a useful episode to go and see. Uh, the relevant the relevant justified questions uh, officially um, yes so the relevant uh, justified questions uh, officially submitted by Russia to the Ukrainians and to the Americans and Ukrainians have received no answer, have gone unanswered. So yeah, I don't think the, the, the Americans bothered to respond to any of the questions so, uh, are still are still unanswered, we might say. They remain open and uh, they need to be settled, resolved. Walker Bispokois of profound concern is the situation in the o the OPCW, okay, the op the, 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 the OPC on the Organization of the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, as that's uh that is definitely uh, an acronym that the Russians will use quite a bit, and as I say o the OPCW. This once authoritative and sugube this this once authoritative and purely yes, just remember yeah, sugube is a word that sometimes I forget. That's quite a important word no purely technical international body or structure the western countries have turned into an instrument to promote their own geopolitical interests in the middle east and beyond so yes sometimes it's annoying so in in um <laughs> in russian so you can have this there's no, you don't you're waiting for the verb right you hear you first hear the accusative, the object of the sentence, which is the authoritative and purely technical international structure, and then you get immediately the uh, the nominative, okay, the subject of the sentence, which is strani zapada, and only then do you get the verb. I mean, obviously that's the, the way the Russian language is. You, you you can do that in Russian and in the Slavic languages. Whereas in English, it makes it a little, just a little bit difficult to um, to convey to the listener who's doing what to whom. But I mean, you can. I think you could say it. So this authoritative, purely technical, international structure, the Western countries have turned it into, and maybe you would throw this "it." The Western countries have turned it into an instrument to promote their own geopolitical interests in the Middle East and there uh, and beyond. Zayevo I mean you can just say beyond. So you just it's all in English you need to really use a sort of tone of voice often very much helps to convey meaning sometimes. Um, because otherwise you're gonna be waiting, you know, okay, you're hearing the, the accusative well you're gonna wait till you hear the the, the noun. You're gonna just wait you you're gonna remember all that the authoritative purely technical international body and you're just going to wait till you hear, okay, the Western countries have turned this authoritative, purely technical structure into an instrument. Again, maybe if you've got the text in front of you, you can get away with it. That would work. But again, you'd be, that would be a struggle if you didn't have the text. And you're just trying to remember that whole chunk. This in particular applies to, so again, what was concocted by the West, namely the Syrian chemical dossier and what was foisted uh, by the OPCW in violation of the CWC, the Chemical Weapons Convention, okay, uh, in, in terms of the illegitimate attributions to define guilty parties in using toxic chemicals and by a week what was that again and uh military i'm gonna have to look that up it's a very important expression okay by via chemical warfare agents that's the one uh -huh. right remember that right by I've forgotten. Okay, chemical warfare agents. I'm sure that's come up in previous interpretation station episodes, and that will. Um, what was another episode I did? I do one of right Nibienzia, something that happened. Uh, remember Novichok? 
few years back in Salisbury in the UK, and I think I did a statement at the Security Council by Nibienzia about that. That gets mentioned, I think, a lot. So anyway, that's a really tough sentence anyway, uh, apart from that. This applies in particular, it's all these, you know, these are all both compound nouns, adjectives. Like, there's this one, the Nadumanova Zapadum Siriskova Kimichiskova Dacier. So the con what was concocted by the West in terms of the Syrian chemical dossier, and what was foisted, Navyazane Ozho, what was foisted by the OPCW in violation of the Convention, or Bezaprishini Chimichiskova Uroja, the CWC, in terms of the illegitimate attributes or attributions uh, to define uh, those guilty of using toxic chemicals and chemical warfare agents. Whew. So I just had to decide to thought I'd look this up, right? This I, this business of attribution. So yeah, apparently the OPCW is wanting to set up. This is going back to 2019, an attribution mechanism. Um, this is taken from TASS. It's the first link I found. Moscow has no plans to fund steps uh, that the OPCW will take to create an attribution mechanism will dem and will demand the return of its share of unspent budget funds. The Russian perm rep to the OPCW told Russia 24. We consider the decision to establish an attribution mechanism to be unlawful because less than half of OPCW convention signatories supported it. Uh, in November 2018, the OPCW decided to increase the organization's budget by 2.4 million euros to 69.7 million euros. The additional money is particularly planned to be spent on the establishment of an attribution group. Russia strongly opposed the move, pointing out that granting attributive functions were granted to the OPCW. The question of the organization's infringement, if they were granted the question of the organization's infringement of the exclusive prerogatives of the UN Security Council would arise. Russia also noted that the CWC did not mention any attribution mechanisms. So there's a bit of background for you. The result of the attribution initiatives um, was the Euro-Atlantic allies pushing through at the Conference of State Parties. Ah, yes, yeah, so sorry, the Kazakh or is just the CWC, the Konvencia Zaprishini Kimichiskova Arugia. So, the result of the attribution initiatives was the Euro Atlantic allies pushing through the uh, Conference of State Parties to the CWC in April 2021, a decision um, to strip Syria of its rights and privileges under the Convention. Parajinia v pravach i privilegiach. Yeah, I, I had to come up with that on the spot, actually. Yeah. So it's not to defeat Syria in this case. I, I, didn't, I wasn't really familiar with that phrase. Parajinia v pravach i privilegiach. I mean, here it says you have to disenfranchise. To deprive, so I think in English, perhaps what makes most sense is to strip Syria of its uh, rights and privileges under the convention. Itogum, the outcome. Maybe here you could say the upshot, just for something different. The upshot of such a destructive, of such destructive activities by the West was a division, the Raskol, uh, in the OPCW, a split. It was a split in the OPCW, uh, it lo losing its independent status and authority as a universally recognized expert body in the sphere of chemical disarmament and non-proliferation. That's the immediate go-to solution here. We urge states parties uh, to the CWC who care, so turn the negative, I think, in English into a positive, who care about the fate. I mean, I guess you could say who are not indifferent to the fate, but uh, first, thing, first of all, that's a lot more syllables, and it's just easy to say, I think, you know, who, who care about the fate of this once successful disarmament mechanism to uh, prevent its ultimate degradation, to stop its ultimate degradation. Stop, prevent. 
Уважаемые коллеги, distinguished colleagues, or just skip it altogether. The CD remains a unique, без альтернативной переговорной площадкой. I mean, again, if you're going at pace, you could probably be forgiven for skipping a unique negotiating forum. And the unique go-to, I sometimes like using go-to as a verb, okay? A unique go-to negotiating forum. Or another one, another sort of compound little adjective. Uh, a must-have is a unique must-have negotiating platform for developing multilateral legally binding agreements in the sphere of disarmament and non-proliferation. Jeez, I've never heard that as an acronym. Control nad wyrażeniem i rozróżnieniem i nierozpространение. KVRM. God, well, there you go. I, I don't know if they'd ever, I don't know if they, I don't know if they just put it like that. I don't know if the, uh, the guy who penned the actual statement just did that as a shortcut so he didn't have to write all that. But in case you ever hear KVRM, that's the, uh, the acronym for Arms Control, Disarmament and Non-Proliferation. Сформированная много лет назад повестка дня. So, what was created many years ago, namely the agenda for the forum, remains uh, relevant to this day. Or, you know, if you've given the guy a bit of space, a few words space, then you could probably just say the agenda, you could probably just, uh, the agenda of the forum created many years ago remains relevant today. Uh, the urgency to, uh, to start negotiations, maybe you could just drop the challenge, the urgency of negotiations on its separate items is patently obvious to us is clear for all to see the urgent need to maybe the, or the need to start negotiations on individual agenda items is plain to see one of those sort of variants okay so so we've always supported efforts to seek consensus and to build constructive work in the conference however as experience has shown in recent years, uh, the delegations of the Western countries are not interested in launching uh, in launching substantive work of the forum or implementing its uh, negotiating mandate, fulfilling its negotiating mandate, delivering on its negotiating mandate using cooked up pretexts again this is an expression that I think the Russians use quite a lot like I've just looked up and looked up a couple of again uh, possibilities of a like on contrived pretexts I think that sounds nice in English on on trumped up on cooked up on concocted but contrived, I like that, on contrived pretexts. And if they, 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 they do their utmost to hinder the adoption of a uh, comprehensive balanced program of work, смещая фокус в работе конференции на непрофильные второстепенные вопросы. I would say here, смещая фокус, it's like distracting the conference's work with non-specialized secondary issues. Yes, Michel Focus. Distracting. Yeah, for one of for one of a better solution, I'd probably just say yeah, but distracting the work of the conference uh, with neprofilnia, non-specialized secondary issues. Again, looking just here for a couple of other alternatives for neprofilnia, because it's something I think an expression they might use quite a bit, the Russians. Non-core is maybe better than non-specialized. Non-core issues. Or another thing, an incidental. I was based on minor, minor issues, incidental, <coughs> minor, minor issues. So take your pick from any of those sort of alternatives I've given you there. Россияне пойдет на поводу тех, кто пытается использовать площадку. 
maybe here Russia will um, will not bow to those who try to использовать вот площадку конференции. Okay, использовать. If you're just hearing it, you know, maybe just who try to use the form of the conference for political purposes. Often a word that will work well though for spoilers of a fan when it's something negative is co-opt. Okay. Russia will not bow to those who try to co-opt the conference for political goals and uh, foist consideration of issues falling outside its scope. Your competence, its scope, its purview, its remit. Okay, there's a good set of words for competence here. Scope, remit, purview. And again, this expression, Pajotna Po, that might be useful and have a good uh, solution for. As so I give you bow, which I think works here, they won't bow to those. They will not kowtow to. Is that, I don't know if that's politically correct in these these days, but uh, yeah, that's a really good word. Bloody hell. Russia will not kowtow to those who try to co op the conference for political purposes and foist or impose consideration of issues falling outside its purview. Together with states that share the same principled position, we will continue to seek adoption. Dabivatsa almost always go for always go for seek. They will seek the adoption of a balanced comprehensive program of work that provides for Pradusmatri Vashi. If I just hear that word in it, you know, and I don't know what's coming next, the safest thing to say is just providing for resumption of the negotiating process and that is the goal so на решение этой задачи нацелено и that's just basically saying the, the, the goal and that's the goal of the Russian initiative to develop an international convention to uh, combat chemical and biological terrorism, terrorist attacks. Achieving this goal is the purpose of. It's a bit of a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? I mean, just that really just means that is the goal of the Russian initiative. To de okay, that is the goal of the Russian initiative to develop an international convention to combat acts of chemical and biological terrorism. Strengthening uh, the international legal basis for combating WMD terrorism is in the interests of all states. Uh, in the name of uh, universal interests of international security, the parties to the conference should show political will. Or in the... In yeah. Maybe just say in the in the interests of in the universal interests of international security, the parties to the conference should show political will. Resuming negotiating work is necessary to uh, bolster, to enhance international security. I thank you. So you got a lot there. There's a lot of very technical vocab in there. I'm not saying that my version is, as I say, the gospel. But uh, hopefully it'll give you a few ideas in future when doing these UN, especially these UN texts on, on nuclear disarmament, non-proliferation, and uh, and so on. So I hope you've uh, you found that useful. As I say once again, sorry I couldn't get this to you before the 2023 English booth sell. But uh, anyway, um, guys, if you've enjoyed the episode, right as usual, you know, in the share, like, share, subscribe, in the comments. If you've got any ideas there, any stuff, that you, any other novel ideas for certain for vocab, please do put them in the comments. Or if anything you think I perhaps went, um, as I say, I'm not perfect by any means. If there's anything you think I I was wrong on, please let me also know uh, in the comments. And just to repeat again, so if you want to follow me, if you want to keep abreast of any future um, announcements I'm making. Follow me out on the Interpretation Station uh, LinkedIn account, and really that pretty much that that is pretty much all for today's show. Which means that all I have to say to you is that episode 174 of the Interpretation Station stands adjourned.
Station. We hope you enjoyed your visit. Until next time, folks.